Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and welcome back for another trading lecture. Today's topic is on common mistakes that traders make, things that are keeping you from becoming a profitable trader. And unlike most of the other lectures, videos, topics you see on Google and everywhere else on the internet from all the gurus, this one actually is honest and truthful about why you're making mistakes, um, possibly how you can correct those mistakes, but mainly why you're failing in this business or really struggling in this business, and I don't sugarcoat anything. The main theme you're gonna hear throughout this is trading is very challenging. This is a hard business, okay? To be successful in this business, you're gonna need an education, you're gonna need market experience, you're gonna need patience, you're gonna need discipline, but the truth of the matter is, most of you have failed before you ever have taken your first trade. You're undercapitalized and overpromised. You have huge hopes and huge dreams, but you have $300 in your trading account. Um, you also lack the experience necessary. You don't have an education. But the fact of the matter is, one of the main reasons that people fail in this business, guys, is because their timeline is too short. You're reading too much of this stuff about gurus turning $363 into over a million in 18 months, verified, blah, 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 okay? So this lecture is about 45 minutes to an hour. It goes systematically in detail why most traders are struggling, but you'll come to see one, the topic is trading is a challenging business regardless, despite it being a wonderful business because of the freedom, time, and flexibility, but also many of you are failing before you ever take your first trade because your timeline is too short, you don't have a trading plan, and you're just underprepared and overpromised. It's just that simple. So I hope you guys enjoy the lecture, guys. It's a no BS lecture. It cuts to the point, and I'm a little, I don't wanna call it ornery, but I'm, I'm really dead center on it today, and I'm not pulling any punches today. Okay, so please don't shoot me a DM or email me about some comments I make in the video being overly harsh. Safe space room is that way. Okay, no safe spaces here. The market doesn't care about you, it doesn't care about me. You're just a number and that's one of the beauties of the business. I say it in the video and I'll say it here, guys. It doesn't matter what your background is, what your race is, what your creed is, what your financial level in this world is, what college you went to, what high school you went to, who your parents are, the market doesn't care. And you should love that about the market because it's the greatest meritocracy there is in the world, okay? So if you fail, it's because of you, and if you succeed, it's because of you, okay? So it's a good lecture to kind of, I wanna say open your eyes and wake you up to the realities of this business versus a lot of the marketing that you're seeing out there online. Okay, so also, as you know, you can get a $1 30-day trial into the Live Traders chat room if you would like. You can come and watch me trade my live account, Real Every Day, Winning Day, Losing Day, and Indifferent Day. Okay, $1 30-day trial if you email info, I-N-F-O, at livetraders.com, all right? So enjoy the lecture, guys. Jared Wesley of Live Traders, and I'll see you again on the flip side. All right, guys, so today's lecture is on common trading mistakes that are costing you money, okay? Uh, several of you folks have asked me or emailed me or told me in the chat room that, hey, why don't you do a lecture on kind of trader afflictions, common mistakes and things you can avoid, uh, especially when you're new. But the truth of the matter is, it's not just when you're new. Some of these things are things that traders are doing after six, 12, 18, 24 months. Some traders are still doing some of these things years later. Even profitable traders do some of these things, but new traders seem to do all of these things and they do them in big, big ways that cost them a lot of money. Uh, I go over these topics quite frequently, but in kind of little tidbits and randomly. So I thought I would just put them all together uh, I threw this together quite quickly, so I wish I could have added a couple few more slides to it, um, but it is what it is, and uh, we're just going to make do with what we have, all right? So common trading mistakes. First and foremost, guys, 
Um, I get this request all the time. I don't really talk about my social media outlets too much, but if you want to find me on Twitter, Scoutmaster1. If you want to find me on Stock Twits, it's at Scoutmaster. If you want to find me on Instagram, it's Scoutmaster1. Again, I don't use Instagram very often. I do use Stock Twits every single day, um, but I don't use Instagram very much anymore. I just find it to be an annoying platform. That is basically, hey, look at me, look how great my life is, so everybody else can feel bad about their lives and then tell you how inspired they are by watching your life. It's pathetic. Nobody's life is that great all the time. All right, it's my little spiel on, on Instagram. Um, so anyway, but uh, you can check me out more productively on stock twits at Scoutmaster, okay? So here's the thing. I mentioned this part the last time I think I did a lecture for you guys, is that Everybody loves charts, okay? So I'll go over a couple little charts here and you guys really feel like you're learning. Like, oh man, I just, Jared, thank you so much. I just learned so much from those charts. I mean, this, this breakout, how you explain the volume drop on there and it's at a whole or a half number and then how you connect the one minute with this beautiful 60 minute chart over here because you always tell us, you know, have that top down approach. Start with a 60 minute or daily, which you did right here with all this void. And then you drill down to the lower time frame and you tell us that you use dollar gainers and dollar losers to scan and you just put it all together and money just falls from the sky. It's beautiful. I mean, that's what gets people in the door, right? But that's not what's going to keep you here or what's going to make you be a profitable trader, okay? I'm going to say something that is an exaggeration. I want to be clear. It's an exaggeration, all right? But... If you have great trade and money management, you could probably throw darts at the Wall Street Journal and figure out a way to at least break even, right? If you have great trade and money management, you could probably throw darts at the Wall Street Journal and break even, okay? So what's the point? The point is charts give you an edge, but there are other things that are actually far more important than charts, okay? And I agree, this is a really nice chart and you should trade charts like this, okay? Uh, here's one that we took, I think this was yesterday, or was it, was it yesterday or two days ago? I don't remember. A little buy setup using the pre-market on Roku, 108.20 by 106.90. Rip, great, right? Another one here. This is a, from, I don't know, a month or two ago. I don't remember exactly when it was, a few months back. All right, little three-bar play on Netflix on the one-minute chart. Makes 700 bucks. Wide bar, narrow bar, rip. And everybody's like, oh, I love those three-bar plays. They're so great. I get emails every day. Jared, you've changed my life. Blah, 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 blah. I know everything there is to know about the three-bar play from your 30-minute video. No, you don't, okay? Um, but anyway, these are the things that people like. Here's the positive side. Here's the positive side before I get into the, the important stuff. Patterns happen every day. In this case, I just chose a three-bar play. Shoot, call it a breakout. Breakouts happen every day. Climactics happen every day. Pullback buy setups happen every day. Sell setups happen every day. Wedges happen every day. Triangle plays happen every day. Three bar plays happen every single day. For those of you in the chat room, tell me I'm lying. Tell me we don't find at least one three bar play every single day. We talked about the pseudo three bar play on Roku today, and we also talked about that beautiful two minute, really nice three bar play on ATVI today. They happen every day, right? So here's the question then. If these patterns happen every day, and you guys acknowledge that they happen every day, then why aren't you guys, why aren't I like visiting you all on your yachts? Because clearly there's more to trading than just patterns, right? You can learn patterns. Sure, you need an education to learn them. That's great and all, but you can learn patterns in three, six, nine months to a relatively high level. The patterns are the easy part of trading. It's everything else that's hard. So when we're talking today's topic as common mistakes that traders make, don't get me wrong, you all make mistakes on patterns, right? Somebody in the chat room just showed me a three bar play that wasn't a three bar play, is nowhere close to being a three bar play. So yes, we do make mistakes with patterns, but they are not the nasty mistakes that we make, right? The egregious, sinful mistakes that we make. These are small mistakes. Guys, who cares if you messed up on one pattern and just didn't get it right and it didn't work, but everything else you did right? Who cares? It's just one trade. You lose one R and you move on. So what, right? It's the truth. So what? So if that's true, 
what is really afflicting traders? What is really costing you guys all this money? Why are you still struggling after 6, 12, 18, 24 months? Why am I getting emails from people about blowing up their trading accounts? Well, because traders do a lot of stupid things. So let's talk about that, okay? So here is a, what I would call basic list. If I had more time to think about it, I probably would have come up with a better list. So these are some of the topics that we're gonna cover over the next 30 minutes. And I'm gonna to try to keep this lecture a little shorter, all right? Over trading, gunslinging, taking too many trades. All right, I see a lot of traders doing this. Not having a trading plan, maybe number one. Not understanding what is required and not understanding your personality. Not treating it like a business. So I, the one thing that gets me about this particular one is we get questions, I would say every day in the trading room, right guys? About somebody asking, what, what's my target on this? Not my target, their target. Hey Jared, what should my target be on Roku? Or, hey, what do you think about following Roku up on a five-minute bar by bar? Well, I don't know. What does your trading plan say to do? Like, really, are you actually in this business with a $10,000, dollars dollars $100,000 account without a plan? Like, you really did that? Yes, the answer is yes for most of you. You actually do this business. You trade day in and day out without a plan. Well, that's just foolish, isn't it? I mean, is there any other business that just kind of gunslings it and just kind of goes at it intuitively? No, most businesses have a modus operandi, a way they go about doing business. Traders don't, traders are gamblers. We'll talk about that in a second. So you're doing this because you really, you're not really treating it like a business. Why? Because you don't have a boss, All right? I'm gonna go over each one of these bullet points with slides, don't worry, but because you don't have a boss telling you what's required. Right? Or you're too cheap to get an education that tells you what is required because you'll get the education after you're profitable, remember? You're gonna make money first, then get the education. So you're gonna just, you're gonna operate on people first and then you're gonna go to medical school. That sounds right, yeah. I don't see anything wrong with that. Sarcasm insert here. Okay, not understanding what's required of you. Most traders fail before they ever take their first trade. If you take anything from this lecture, write that down. Most traders fail before they've ever taken their first trade because of a lack of preparation and understanding of what is required, okay? This is a big one too, not understanding level two slash order entry. You make order entry errors, you get skipped on trades, you get partial fills, you know, because everybody out there on the internet, you know, they get perfect fills. At least that's what they want you to think. Like there's no slippage in trading. There's no spreads in trading. I get filled all the time on everything. You know, those dark pools that I trade. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. Okay. Poor money management, you know, risking mu too much too soon. You want to get rich quick. That fear of missing out FOMO, not taking stop losses, selling too soon, undercapitalized. You know, of all of these categories, this is the most egregious right? This is the most egregious because it's the most deadly in terms of how fast it can happen to you. What I mean by that is simple. You can be doing everything right, everything right, and then make one mistake that has a huge impact on your trading account and ultimately your trading career. Let me explain. Let's say you're relatively disciplined, but whatever is going on in your life today or whatever is happening you just decide that you don't wanna take a stop loss and you're in this position leveraged four to one and you used some of that leverage to get in this position and the trade goes against you, you don't take your stop loss and it just keeps going against you, okay? Couple things are gonna happen here. One, you're either just gonna lose a dog load of money which is gonna chop a leg off your account like you know, taking, some, half, taking somebody's stack in poker in the first hand or two of the game yeah, you've hurt them significantly. For them to come back is really hard now. For you to take a 50K account and lose 20 grand on a trade, you've really severely damaged yourself, okay? Or, or you get lucky and that trade ultimately comes back and you're able to get out for a small loss or a small gain, but it costs you three months or six months, right? You're in that trade for so long because you're married to it now, you're drinking the hopium, but it cost you three to six months. And you say to yourself, well, gosh, it cost me three months of basically very little buying power because I traded this on margin or leverage. And now I, you know, I don't have that buying power. It's eaten up in one trade. Now I can't take very many trades or the trades I do take, I have to risk very small amounts of money. Either way, it hurts you. 
One, you lost the money. The other one, you got your money back, but it cost you time. All right. So those things really severely damage traders and they don't realize just what they're doing when they do it. And then, of course, the fear of missing out, which really could be connected to the last one. Fear of missing out is similar to blindly following other people and watching too many Google ads. OK, guys, I mean, I don't need to mention names or anything like that, but I've seen Google ads about people saying they turned, uh, oh, I don't know, four hundred and sixty two dollars into over a million verified. Sure you did. It's why you're living in that two hundred thousand dollar house in the Northeast. Um, and, you know, you don't have anything to your name. Right. OK, my point is those things are what? They're preying on your dreams, your hopes, your emotions. That's what they want. They want you to believe that this business is easy and anybody can do it and you can do it too. Just give me a couple grand, take my course with your $500 trading account. You too can do what I did. It's a bunch of BS, okay? Guys, I've taken two and $3,000 accounts into fifty and $100,000. You're going, Jared, you're doing the same thing as a Google ad. I'm not, because I'm about to say this. I did it with eight to 10 years of experience. I didn't do it as a new trader, right? I did it as, as, as an experiment to show people that it's not about the money, it's about proper trading, but new traders don't trade properly. So if you come in with a one or two or $3,000 account, because you know some Google ad told you you could do it too, you're most likely going to eat that account up even if you trade okay, why? The monthly platform fee is going to get you. Maybe commissions get you, right? Those types of things are going to eat into that tiny little account. So that would also go under the undercapitalized section. I'm not here to blow up your dream. I'm here to try to give you a realistic chance of succeeding in this business. Name me any other real business you can start for a grand or two these days. Not very many. I'm sure there are some home-based eBay businesses, perhaps Craigslist, I don't know. But you can't start a, a franchise for that. You can't start a construction company for that. Heck, your tools cost you more than $1,000, right? So I get all the folks out there that you have these dreams of doing more in life and being better in life. I get it. I do. But be realistic also. Be realistic also. Okay. So, Guys, in terms of overtrading, even for good traders, guys, more trades are not always more profitable. Just because you take more of something doesn't mean you get more from it, right? Sometimes certain days, and we've seen this the last couple weeks, one or two trades a day is about all the quality you're going to find. You're coming in with crappy gap lists because we're between earnings season, market's been choppy and volatile with geopolitical events, US trade, China news, et cetera, economy fears, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes it's just not conducive to taking eight, 10, 20, 30 trades in a day. But here's the beauty, you don't have to. You know, as it says on the bottom, one good trade a day keeps the J-O-B away. So get rid of this fear of missing out. You hear me say this all the time. I'll just repeat myself for the 50th time. The market will be here tomorrow, next week, next month, and next year. And if it's not, you're likely not going to be here either because it's Armageddon. Relax. Chill out. There's going to be another trade. If not today, then definitely tomorrow. And if not tomorrow, then next day, I promise. Okay? So stop the FOMO. Stop blindly following other people and copying. Why? Because if you don't understand it, you have no business doing it. Repeat. If you don't understand it, you have no business doing it. You do realize, okay, this isn't like you're out on the golf course just having some fun. Do, do you guys understand what the market really is? Do you understand that the market is made up of some of the dumbest, but mostly some of the smartest people on the planet? Right? That their only job is to separate you from your money. MIT grads, PhD grads, these types of things with big companies backing them also they can figure out a way to take money off of you so if you don't understand what it is you're doing or you don't understand what it is the person you're following is doing don't do it watch it and learn from it you want to paper trade it that's fine but to put real money into some internet guru and you could consider me one of those if you want but i tell people every day in the chat room don't follow me unless you know what i'm doing otherwise you're gambling and traders are gamblers right don't get caught up in the need to be right Okay, 
I get it, guys. You're happy when you come into the chat room and you make money. Your first day, like, oh, we made a ton of money. You're great. You come in the first day, I lose money. Oh, I lost money too, Jared. You stink. No, that's not how it is, right? So just don't fall victim to these emotions. Over trading is a really big one. And you somehow justify it like you've lost three or four trades in a row. And you're like, well, the fifth one has to work. I can't possibly lose five in a row. That's just not how it works, right? It's just not how it works, okay? All right. So why do you need a trading plan, guys? Well, I don't know. It should be pretty obvious to most folks, right? You need a plan because, well, that's your plan. It's your roadmap to success, okay? Pretty much everything we do in life has some form of a plan, even if it's a very flexible plan. Trading, you shouldn't have a flexible plan, but my point is, is you're coming into one of the, perhaps the most challenging thing you'll ever do in your life. I mean, unless you're in the military, this might be, the most difficult thing there is to do. I mean, I'm sure some of you will shoot me an email or DM me or whatever and say, no, Jared, I used to, you know, I used to basket weave and that's harder than trading. But I think for those of you out there that have tried trading or are currently traders, I'm telling you the truth. This is probably the hardest thing you've ever tried. One of the most frustrating things you've ever tried because your intelligence doesn't buy you anything in this business. Nepotism doesn't buy you anything in this business. The university you went to doesn't buy you anything in this business. Your bank account, your bankroll doesn't buy you anything in this business. It's the greatest meritocracy there is. It doesn't care what race you are, what color you are, what creed you are, what school you went to, how much money you have. The market doesn't care. You're just a number. That you should actually like that about trading. But here's the rub. Because of that, it's all about you. And most people are what? Victim mentality excuse makers. True? The average person is a victim of something. Everybody wants to be a victim of something nowadays. And they make excuses why they didn't get that promotion. Okay? Or why they didn't succeed at this or that. Or that... Donald Trump's a billionaire because his daddy gave him money. Well, if that were true, everybody that got given $20 million would be a billionaire. My point I'm making is this is about you and there's nobody else you can blame and traders have a really hard time with that. You look around and you go, shit, there's no boss I can blame. There's no coworker I can blame. There's no spouse I can blame. There's no economy I can blame, or government I can blame, or politician I can blame, blah, blah, blah. And you can't handle it. So having said that, back to the point, you need a plan. And if you develop a plan where you develop a market bias and you check your news reports and you create a focus list or a gap list and you prioritize that list and you put them on your watch notes and you be patient and wait for your pitch, all combined with money management, which we'll talk about, you have an opportunity to succeed at one of the best businesses in the world. One of the most challenging, but also the best. I'm in shorts and a t-shirt right now in my home office. What are you doing? I don't know. Maybe you're driving to work. Maybe you're in a suit and tie. I don't know. But you're going to pay for that freedom and flexibility to be a great trader. It's not just going to come easy. To get those types of things that nobody else has, you will pay for them with time Emotion, stress, money, you will pay in some way. But when you can do it, it's the best business there is. Okay? Now, when you don't have a plan, many of you have seen this slide, I've used it before. But when you don't have a plan, you do stupid, stupid, stupid stuff like this. I use three times stupid because this is what stupidity looks like. Okay? Some people DM me and goes, Jared, aren't you a little harsh in your videos? Go in your safe space. I don't have time for it, okay? This is dumb, okay? This is dumb. That is it, period. There's nothing else to say. 10 minutes ago when I gave you guys that example of somebody who just emailed me literally yesterday, day before, of their, their nephew taking a 100,000 euro account into 7,000 euros, losing 93,000 euros? That is dumb. I'm sorry. You guys can say I'm mean. You cannot subscribe to the channel. You cannot watch me. You can get out of the chat room if you want. I don't care. It's dumb. 
I understand that Google will tell you that blowing up a trading account is part of the process, you know, because some internet guru has done it before and now they're magically successful. So if you do it, it's okay too. It's not okay. There's nothing okay about it. There's nothing. If you come into this business, you have a plan, you have proper money management, this will never happen to you. It will never happen to you. This is what happens when you don't have a trading plan. Okay. When you wing it, when you gunsling it, when you think you know better, you have FOMO and you want to get rich quick. Okay. Wow. Somebody's asking me, what was the purpose of that email? Well, it happened to be the uncle of this person saying, thank you, Jared, for your videos. I really appreciate it because this particular uncle was looking to get into trading and he used his nephew as a cautionary tale and he appreciated that I told people this is a difficult business and if you're not smart, you're going to get killed. And he just wanted to say thank you to me. I put up his email, but it's kind of long actually. All right. But that was the purpose of it, Peter. Anyway, I don't mean to harp guys and say stupid this and idiot that. That's not my, my goal. Okay. My goal here is to say... Be careful. Don't do these things. This is not normal. This is unacceptable. I don't care what anybody online tells you. This isn't normal. This isn't supposed to happen. Okay? So if somebody ever says that to you, run away. They have no idea what they're talking about. Okay? Now, this is a big one. All right? And I understand you guys don't love text slides. But we already talked about charts. Charts get you in the door. The sledgehammer after you get in the door is what keeps you here because it keeps you safe. There are two things that people, you know, that you need to be successful. Most folks have one of those two things, okay? They have the outcome goal, okay? But they don't have the process goal, right? Most people know what they want in life. They just don't know how they're going to get it. If you talk to I don't know, 80% of people, 90% of people just outside of trading and say, hey, what's your goal? I don't know. My goal is to be a millionaire or my goal is to retire at 50 or my goal uh, is to, I don't know, send my kids to a private school or whatever the goal is, okay? They know that, don't they? They somehow know what their goal is pretty quickly. You know, they don't have to, they don't have to take much time thinking about it, right? We all had pictures, I, not all of us, some of us like cars, I like cars, when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, I had a picture of a Lamborghini Countach on my wall and a picture of Andre Agassi and Jennifer Capriati. Those are the three posters I had on my wall, okay? I wanted to be a tennis player because I was serious into tennis and I wanted a really nice car. Shallow, perhaps, but I was 13 years old. I knew what I wanted. Like many of you know what you want. The question is, we don't know how we're going to get it. So this is where everybody's got the outcome goal and very few of you have the process goal. So now let's relate this back specifically to trading. In trading, the outcome is freedom, flexibility, perhaps money. The money allows you that freedom and flexibility to some extent. The question is how? Well, I'm gonna trade. That's the how. It's not the how, guys. The how is your trading plan. What? specifically are you going to do? What time frame are you going to trade in? How many trades per day are you going to take? Okay. What specific patterns are you going to take? How much money do you have to start? What is your timeline for success? Right? So, you know, given your available time, your personality style, your financial resources, your personal preferences, given these things, some of these are intangible, like personality style or personal preference. Some of them are concrete, like how much money you have to start. That's concrete, okay? Those things are how you'll develop your process or your trading plan to become successful. And remember, your trading plan is a give and take document, meaning you write it down and then you try to trade your plan. You see what, it, what happens and you have to make some adjustments. The first time you write your plan is not gonna be perfect, I promise, okay? It won't be. It's just the way life works. Okay. All right. I'm going to go over this slide really quickly. Traders struggle, guys, because they lack understanding. 
They don't realize the commissions and fees. I understand a lot of you have free commissions now, this new wave that's running through the industry, but still other platform costs or they have a platform where they can't short stocks or it's unreliable, not enough capital, terrible trade management, no discipline. I'm not gonna spend a long time on this right here, but just take a picture of it. These are a lot of reasons that people fail, okay? The biggest one here really is the last one. No discipline and no safety switch. You just either don't follow rules or don't have rules. You don't know when to shut it down. You don't know when to take a break. That's the biggest reason, okay? In fact, I think I just got an email from somebody this morning. I got to double check. I just saw the head the header on it, right? Um, and this person emailed me yesterday and how they've been in a position for many, many months now. And it's just been draining their account down. He's like, but I just can't bring myself to accept the loss. And the headline of, of this morning's email was, I finally did it. It means this trader finally got to the point where they woke up and said, the bleeding must stop. Why did this happen? Well, hopefully my email helped them, but also the pain got great enough where they realized I can't take it anymore. Cut the loss, move on. I should have done this months ago. I didn't just do it now. Better late than never. You find yourselves in that position frequently. If you do, you're not going to last very long. Okay. All right. Now let's move to some slightly different topics. If you're going to be a trader, a successful one, you're going to need to understand a little bit about level two order entry. It's just part of trading. This isn't Forex guys. It's not futures. Forex, the liquidity is so ridiculous. You don't have to worry about moving the market. Okay. But in stock trading, sure, you could trade a basket of stocks like BAC or MU that are highly liquid, but we like to trade stocks that have patterns regardless. So you need to understand how to get into a position. And I'm not talking about stop market or stop limit or market orders or limit orders or bracket, excuse me, or bracket orders. Um, talking about level two, like literally how you place an order and some of the things that need to be determined to be successful when you place an order. Okay, so the bid and the ask strength, what I call the balance of power. If it has a large ask and a small bid, it's not ready. I'm going to show you in a minute. Large bid, small ask, it's ready to pop. The spread of the stock, how many shares you need. Okay, so again, guys, you're going to need to know the spread of the stock. You're going to need to know how many shares you need. All right, and you're going to have to understand the balance of power. Okay, um, it's just, it's astonishing to me how few people talk about this topic. So let's take a look, for example. Now, this is, before you email me, this is Trade Station. Okay, this is Trade Station. <laughs> One more time, this is Trade Station. Okay, so this is what the order entry matrix is. So now, I understand this might be slightly different than what your order entry looks like. But the concept is the same. Buyers and sellers coming together to form price action, okay? So you have the buyers on the left, the sellers on the right. And you can see all the way through this, there's four different examples right here. That some stocks like this on the left are highly, highly liquid. There's 59,000 shares on the buy side here, plus all these below it. And there's 281,000 shares on the sell side. That's highly liquid. Getting shares of this stock will not likely be a problem, right? Over here, the next one over right here. There are almost 20,000 shares on the bid, the buyers, and there's about 800,000 shares on the sell side. Getting shares of this stock at 55 or that area is not likely going to be a problem, but if you wanna get shares of this stock right here, there's only 1,100 on the bid, there's 300 on the offer, and there's a 12 cent spread between. Some of you are gonna go, I don't even know what you're saying. What do you mean a 12 cent spread? Guys, the spread is simply the difference between where the buyers are and where the sellers are. The buyers are at 175.12, the sellers are at 175.24. The buyers only want to pay 175.12 and the sellers will only accept 175.24. So you have a choice. If you want to get in right now, you'd have to 
what we call hit the bid, which means pay up 175.24, right? But you might not want to do that because you're paying up 12 cents. So then you have to figure out how to get in. But you can see on the right hand side, these are the number of shares that have already been printed. 100, 400, 100, none, 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 100, none, none, 100, 900, none, 100. Not very many. Over here, all the way on the left hand side, there's hundreds of thousands of shares. So if you need 2000 shares of this, no big deal. If you need 2000 shares of this, it's a very big deal. Where are they going to come from? So nobody talks about this stuff. I love it when somebody says, oh yeah, just buy, you know, whatever this stock is, buy it at 175.05, all right, and use a stop loss at 174, and then it pops. All right, well, it printed 400 at 05, 100 at 06, and then what, maybe 1,300 since then? Well, if you need 2,000 shares, it, it barely even printed 2,000 shares, and I'm going to guess you're not the only person in the world who wanted to trade this thing. How are you going to get those shares? Great question, isn't it? We'll come back to it. Okay. Same deal here. Fill or no fill. Hey guys, isn't this three bar play just swell? Isn't it beautiful and perfect? Yeah, you know, you just short it right there at 177.50, put your stop at 179 and just make money and walk to the bank and cash that check. Just not that easy. Just doesn't work that way. Okay. You actually have to get those shares. Those shares are represented on the level two. Well, here's another example of if you put your order at 177.49, you're not getting any shares of this thing, guys. So you had to what we call anticipate. You had to put your order at 177.51 or 177.52 or 53. So that by the time your order triggers, maybe you get filled at 177.50 because there's 25,000 there. And then you can write it down. Most of you don't know how much room to give your stop limit orders. You don't know where to start your order. You don't understand the spread of a stock, which means you might have to lower your share size because of the spread of the stock. Let me give you an example. Example. Let's say the spread of a stock is 30 cents and your stop loss is $1. So your stop loss is a dollar and you're going, all right, well, I want to risk, you know, 500 bucks. So I'm going to take 500 shares. In theory, all right, it's perfect. $1 stop, 500 shares, $500 risk. If I lose, I lose 500 bucks. If I win, I make a thousand or so, right? Great. But with a 30 cent spread, what's the likelihood you're only gonna lose a dollar if it doesn't work? Zero to none. You're gonna take what we call slippage. You're not gonna lose a dollar. You're gonna lose a dollar 10, a dollar 20, dollar 30. So you're not actually gonna lose $500 on this trade. You're gonna lose 550, 600, 650 plus commissions. Why? Because you didn't understand how spready the stock was. You didn't understand where the shares were, where the buyers and sellers were, right? A pattern is only as good as the fill you get on it. If you need 500 shares, this you get filled for 100 shares. It's not that great, is it? It's one fifth as good as you hoped it would be. The spread matters. The level two matters. Okay, same deal here. Look at the spread all the way. I'm all the way on the right hand side. Guys, the buyers are at 1582 and the sellers are 1625. That's a 40-plus cent spread on a $16 stock. And you know what I see many of you guys doing? I see you guys taking trades. You're like, yeah, Jared, I'm in this stock, you know, at you know 1582 here, and I have a 50 cent stop loss. I'm like, okay, so you have a 50 cent stop loss, but the spread is 43 cents. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, what if this thing goes against you, like stops you out, goes down? Do you think you're really just going to only lose 50 cents on it? No, you're going to lose 50 cents plus the spread. You're going to lose 93 cents on this thing. Maybe not exactly. Maybe you lose 82 cents. Maybe you lose a dollar three. So instead of losing 500 bucks, you're going to lose a thousand because you didn't understand the level two. That's unacceptable. It's just not acceptable. Okay. And that assumes you got filled on the entry. You may have gotten skipped on the entry because you didn't understand how to get filled. Now, I wouldn't have taken this. It's just too whippy and just too spready for a $15 stop. Okay. 
There's the same slide I just showed you. I tried to get this. I got skipped on it. Okay. I tried to get it and I got skipped on. It. Okay. All right. Now, money management. It's a topic I talk about all the time. I feel like it's a topic I can't talk about enough. I'm not going to spend as much time on it today because I've drugged this out far enough already. New traders, just, just hear me out on this. New traders, 10 to $30 risk. That's it. That's all I have to say. If you are not consistently profitable, you should be risking 10 to $30 per trade, preferably 10. Less is more when it comes to risk. Why? Because you don't know what you're doing. You're going to lose money your first three, six, nine months. I promise you, you're going to. All right. If you break even your first year in trading, you're a rock star. Repeat, if you break even your first year, you're a rock star. You earn the right to raise risk. How do you do that? You let your results show you. Make sense? You let your results do that for you. So if you're showing three, six months of consistent profitability, maybe it's only $50 a month. Maybe you're making five R a month, right? $10 per trade, you made 50 bucks. Great, do that for two or three months in a row. Then you can raise your risk to say $25. Make, you know, five R at 25, make $125 a month for another two or three months. Now you can raise from 25 to 50. Do the same thing at 50. So how long would it take you to go from 10 to say $200 or $300 risk? A couple years. Two or three years. I don't have that kind of time. Yes, you do. If you don't, then this isn't your business. It's not your business. This isn't the business you start because you just got laid off from another job and you need to make money quick. That's a job that you need to take where they pay you a salary or an hourly. Trading is not that job. Trading has one unique thing that most other jobs don't have. See, you go into a regular job, you have a good day, you have a bad day, you get paid, right? You're a, you're a salary person. Whether you, had, whether you had a really good day, you get paid. You had a really bad day, you get paid. You have a sales job. You have a really good day, you get paid. You have a really bad day, you don't get paid. Trading has that third factor. You have a really good day, you get paid. You have a really good bad day, uh, you don't not get paid, you lose money. Right, good day, get paid. Mediocre day, break even. Bad day, lose money. Most jobs don't have that third aspect. Okay? This is why you risk small amounts of money and you do that until you're consistently profitable. I know that many of you are shaking your heads and going, yeah, that's actually good advice, but you don't understand, Jared. My kid needs new shoes. I got to pay my mortgage. This isn't your business then. Not right now, it's not. Get a side gig. That pays your bills while you're learning this business, okay? I just talked about this a minute ago, but I'm going to go over it briefly because I get a lot of people that don't understand what R is. What is risk level, guys? It's simply the amount of money you are willing to lose, willing to lose on a given trade if you are wrong. If you're wrong, because we're not always right. I know some of those Google gurus out there never lose and, ah, oh, this is the second best day I've ever had in my life. I made $88,000 in one day. Let me show you how I did it right. Again, it's why you're living in a one bedroom apartment in Northern California. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. It's weird because my garage is filled with nice things and so is the airport and all that, but I don't make $86,000 a day trading, but all these other gurus do. It's weird how that works, okay? Point is, is risk protects you. Understanding how risk is determined protects you. That's what your risk is, guys. It's an amount of money you're willing to lose. And when you're new, that number should be $10. So how do you determine it? You take your entry price minus your stop price, divided by the dollar amount, okay? So in this case, it's a 50 cent difference, right? The entry is $50, the stop price is 49. That's a 50 cent difference. In this case, we're risking $500. So you would simply divide 500 by 50 cents and you get a thousand shares. So that's how you would risk $500 on this trade. If you were risking $10 on this trade, how many shares would you take? You would take five shares. Yes, five shares, that's okay. Five shares, or 10 shares, my apologies, 10 shares, 10 shares, 10 shares. You would take 10 shares, okay? 10 shares times 50 cents. Is that $5 or $10? I'm losing my mind. Is it 20 shares? Oh, you guys aren't correcting me. I think it's 20 shares, all right? My point I'm making, guys, is yes, you have to take small shares when you're new. You have to risk small amounts when you're new. So if this trade in this analogy stops, you lose 500 bucks. 
not including slippage and fees. If it works, maybe make two to one, three to one, four to one. Okay, so you take the entry price minus stop price and you cannot take a trade unless you know both of these before you trade it. You have to know your stop price before you get in. This goes back to having a trading plan. If you don't have one, don't trade. You're gambling if you don't know what your stop price is and you will put a hard stop in the system, period. You will put a hard stop in the system, not a mental stop. Use a stop market and put it in the system just in case what your internet goes down, something happens to your platform, an emergency happens, whatever, okay? Why? Because if your platform froze and this happened and you had a mental stop in, and don't kid yourselves, guys. I don't want any sarcastic comments from people out there because I do get them. Yes, your platform could freeze. Yes, your internet could go down. Those things really do happen. Yes, your electricity could go out for 10 minutes and you could come back four hour worse off. It happens, okay? So in this case, you're gonna take your stop loss at 74 bucks. You're going to put a hard stop in the system, a stop market order. You're gonna put a stop market order 74. And when it triggers 74, you get the you know what out. Get out. If you don't, you're, you're gonna be, what are you gonna be doing? You know what you're gonna be doing. You're gonna be drinking the hopium. You're gonna be looking at every possible news report out there. What's the CEO up to? What's the credit risk? What are the sales figure? Hey, when are they doing earnings? What's Jim Cramer saying about the stock? Hey, they just got upgraded. I'm gonna hold on to it or downgrade it or whatever. You're not trading then. You're gambling. You think you're investing, but you're not because your plan was to get out at 74. Now you're so far past your plan, you, you can't call that fundamental trading. You just call that gambling, okay? And real quick, I know, I know I do this a lot. I hate doing this to this person. I don't know who it is, but then you become this and you don't ever, ever, ever want to be this, right? You don't ever want to be this, okay? That's not good trading, all right? Okay, so brief, I'm gonna go over this very quickly. Money management considerations, use common sense. I know you have it, you just don't apply it. I know most people have it, they just don't apply it. They want instant gratification, they have FOMO, the need to be right, just be realistic. Realize that the stop is there to help you. I understand it doesn't feel good to lose three trades in a row or four trades in a row, but it's better than holding on to a stock that's going to cause you pain for the next six months. Just get out and move on. You'll feel better tomorrow, I promise you. I promise. Risk small amounts in the beginning. Preserving your capital is your number one job as a new trader. And don't get ahead of yourself. The market doesn't care what your situation in life is. Just do the right thing, okay? You earn the right to raise your risk. The results will decide that. Have rules for raising and lowering your risk. Let's say you're doing the right things and you have a really good one, one year, 18 month period and you're slowly raising risk properly, but then you go through a really tough stretch. Lower your risk back down, have rules for that and then build back up again, right? Always place a stop loss, always place a stop loss, period. As Soon as you get into the trade, put your stop loss in. One second after entry, get it, put a stop loss in, or just use a bracket order. Define what your maximum loss for the day is, the week and the month, and do not go past it. Do not exceed it. Define your goals for the week and the month, right? The day, the week, the month. You don't have to stop when you reach them. I'm not saying you have to stop. I'm just saying have those goals, okay? And then have the rules when you hit, reach those goals. At the end of the day, guys, a plan will determine all of these things. And if you have a plan and don't follow it, you don't have a plan. Okay, that's simple. The end of the day, guys, this is all trading is. This is a monthly chart. I did this on purpose. We're so used to looking at two minute charts, daily charts, 15 minute charts. I put a monthly on here. Why? Because it doesn't change. It's the same thing. This is a monthly breakout at $60. On the Qs, on the Qs, that's the market, by the way, NASDAQ 100, with a stop down at 49 bucks. You get in at 60, your stop's 49. Look at this bad boy. Sure, it took five, six years to get there, but that's what core trades are all about. Yeah, you risked $11,000 on this trade, but you made over 60 on it, right? On your core trade. Now, may might you have taken some off up in this range? Probably, right? Look at that little nasty drop right there. 
Maybe you take half off or something like that. Point is, it never busted this moving average, the 20 period moving average. Sure, it's choppy, but that's a monthly chart for you. Guys, this is what can happen when you have a plan. First target, why is it at 120? That's the prior pivot high. This is what a trading plan does for you. Add back on the breakout and boom, stock goes from 60 to 180. I mean, realistic, could have made $100,000 on this trade. Could have made 100 grand on that. Okay? And yes, it cost you 60 grand, but you could have made 100. So if you want to look at it that way, a straight cash trade, $60,000 on this, and your position would be worth 120, 130, 140 grand. Okay? Point I'm making, guys, is I'm wrapping up everything I just talked about into a couple charts. What I mean is these patterns are always here. Whether it's on a one minute or a monthly, you will always find a breakout. You will always find a three bar play. You will always find a buy setup, climactic. Sorry, that was the 50 period, not the 20. I apologize. Okay. But how you manage it is what's key. Understanding how to get into it, how to get your sh the shares that you need, understanding how to risk proper amounts of money, right? How do you determine risk level? how you enter a trade, how you place a stop loss, following the rules of your plan. These are the things that ultimately make you money, okay? This right here is using a pre-market climactic to get in basically on a pseudo three-bar play. You can't actually see all these red bars, right? That's pre-market. Take all those red bars off. Somebody thought you just bought this randomly. No, we bought like a climactic buy setup, okay? How and why? Because the plan lets us do this. How you get in, look at the spread. Going to have to anticipate this a little bit because it has a 15 or 11 cent spread. Okay? And all that stuff's right out of professional trading strategy. Everything I just talked about. Like, for example, we did like, what? Three slides on level two? That chapter is 80 pages. Right? So, this is what you're going to need to be good, guys. You need some guidance. You're going to need an education. Get some trading buddies. Okay? Seriously, I mean that. Get a trading buddy that you can run ideas back and forth off of. It really is helpful. I mean that. Somebody that will be honest with you. Not lie to you. Just be direct and say, you are an idiot. Why did you do that? Let's talk about it. Okay? So it'll give you a much better understanding of what's really wrong. Why do I say this to you? Because most people lie to themselves. That comes down to the objectivity section. We like to kid ourselves. We like to think we're better at things than we really are. And when people tell us we're not, we immediately take offense to it. Instead of opening our mind and saying, you know what, you might be right. We immediately go into defense mode, okay? Immediately. Why? Because we feel like it's an attack on our ego. And God forbid somebody attacks our ego. That's our pride. Results don't lie. Get an education, guys. Don't operate on a patient. I'm not going to lecture you on it. Don't operate on a patient before you go to medical school. Put together a well-defined plan, which you'll get through an education. You'll help refine your plan by using a trading buddy. Okay? Make sure your plan has all the proper tools to succeed. All these people using Robinhood app and all Just get a real platform. Okay? Have the objectivity and humility to realize when you're wrong and to make necessary adjustments when things aren't going right. Guys, what I mean by objectivity and humility is you know damn well you're wrong when you're risking $200 and you've been trading for a month. You know you're wrong. Somebody today, actually, okay? Granted, I'll give them some credit. They were paper trading. Somebody today uh, on StockTwit said, hey, Jared, thank you so much for that Roku trade, all right? I made $500 today. I said, great, but if you're paper trading, why aren't you treating it like real money. Basically, why, why are you trading so much risk? You should be trading 10 or $20 risk. And if you're trading $10 risk, there's no way you could have made $500. That'd be 50 to one on your money. It's impossible. Oh, well, part of it was a swing trade on Microsoft. Well, if you're trading $50 risk, you still couldn't have made 50 to one on your swing trade on Microsoft. So this person is already going about the business wrong. Yes, they're in simulator, so no harm, no foul. But they're not treating simulator like it's real money. So when they go to real money, it's going to be a real eye-opening experience. I don't remember uh, their name, John. I have it in my 
it's in my stock twits line. I don't want to say their name anyway. <laughs> it wouldn't be very nice. Um, anyway, was it you? No, I'm kidding. Um, learn from your mistakes, guys. Be objective. Be smart. Okay. And then, of course, you're going to need market experience. Period. If you you're you're going to need it. I I can teach it all in blue in the face, guys. I can talk to you all day long. Give a lecture five times a day for a year. And you'll go, yeah, that's great information. But until you feel it, you don't know. Till those emotions run through your blood, you don't know. Okay? And then lastly, you better have a realistic timeline, guys. I mean, I'll see this on the next slide, but you need a realistic timeline. If you're not giving this business one to three years, you're not giving this business a fair shake. If you're not giving this business one to three years, preferably two or three, you're not giving it a fair shake. This is why I tell you. We'll go to the next slide. Give it time. Okay? You realize at the end of the day, and this is the last slide, guys. At the end of the day, everything we do has a cause and effect. So you have to decide why it is you do what you do. So we just spent a long time talking about people not using common sense. People losing more than they should. People breaking their trading plans. You have to understand the why behind it. Otherwise, you'll do it again. Okay? So why do you do what you do? Why do you sell too soon? Why didn't you take that stop loss? Dig deep. This is why it's such a challenging business. You have to dig deep without somebody else doing it for you. And digging deep internally is hard because we, we're always in protection mode. So if you sell so too soon, is it because you're scared to give back profits? Is it because you need the money? Right? If you need the money, how can you overcome this issue? So for example, here's a possibility. Get a part-time job. Cut back on your living expenses. This might help you trade more relaxed, more patient, less stress. So it's a process that you go through. Cause and effect. Why did I do it? Once you understand the why, you can work on fixing it. If you don't understand the why, you're going to have a really hard time fixing it. Okay? And sometimes, as it says, the answer is not what you want to hear. Sometimes you're just not doing things right. Lack of capital poor preparation, etc. You might have to reproject your timeline. For most traders I've met, they have to do this at some point in their trading career. Most traders I've met have had to reproject their time. They come in thinking in six months they're going to be a rock star. I'm raising my hand because that was me. That was me. Oh, I came from Wall Street. Graduated a good school. I'm a smart guy. I'll figure it out. Wrong. So I'm not preaching at you. I did the same thing. I reprojected my timeline. But I'm telling you up front. See, I, nobody told me this up front, that it's going to take longer than I think to be successful. Why? Because everybody just wants to reel you in, rope you in. It's going to take longer than you think, I promise you. Promise it. Take how long you think it's going to take and double or triple it, and you might be close. Okay? So, from this information, and this is the most important part of all of this, from all of this information, it might force you to make some really difficult decisions. It might force you to make some really difficult decisions. I did, okay? I did. I went from a beautiful home to a one bedroom apartment. I cut back everything, cut all my expenses. Nice new car, sold that. Wife went back to work as a nurse, all that stuff. Now I sit here and look back and go, it was the best decision I ever made, okay? just depends on how bad you want something. It just depends on how bad that you want something. Okay? But you're not going to get any of that if you can't admit to yourself where your deficiencies lie. Okay? Because at the end of the day, these charts are really nice. They're really pretty. But it has no bearing on whether or not you're going to be successful. I shouldn't say it has no bearing. It has a smaller bearing than understanding the psychology understanding how to get filled on a trade, understanding risk management, money management, account protection. Those are the things that come first. Okay? These charts are great. Love them. I love looking at charts, guys. Okay? I mean, to me, it's like, <laughs> excuse the inappropriate example, but looking at charts is like flipping through a Victoria's Secret catalog to me. Like, I really get my rocks off on this. I love looking at charts every day. I love the challenge of it. Does that make sense to you? The challenge of it. There's no other job that gives you that kind of a challenge. 
right? I'm not where I was when I started, where I didn't want weekends to happen. Right? I'm well past that. I know a lot of you out there are like, oh, it's Saturday. What am I? No, go out and have fun on Saturday. Enjoy yourself. But Monday to Friday, I love looking at this stuff. Sure, it's not, there's frustrating times. I still have after 15 or 20 years, but I still love reading charts and going, I did that. I read that chart right and we made money from it. It's a good feeling, right? So just remember though, to get to that point, there's a lot of other things that have to happen, like understanding yourself, reevaluating your timeline, having proper money management, trade management, not listening to all this Google crap where it says you can turn $463 into 1.1 million in 18 months, and I verified it, sure you did, okay? All right, so if you have any questions or comments, shoot me an email, jared at livetraders.com. You can also, I guess, private message me if you want, but email is the best way to contact me, all right? Hope you enjoyed the lecture. That's it for today. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.